What an incredible foundation we have for our faith. It's a truth not shared by any other religion with the same kind of eyewitness verification the followers of Christ have. Obviously, there were those first disciples who saw Christ risen, and of course, those Marys, Mary Magdalene, and the other Mary, as Matthew refers to her. By the way, I don't think it's any accident of history that with the exception of the beloved disciple John, all the disciples accepted death in horrible ways rather than to recant their testimony and their accounts of Christ's resurrection. And then also there were the 500 other witnesses that are spoken of by the Apostle Paul in 1 Corinthians 15. Peter mentions these eyewitness accounts this way in our reading from Acts for today. He says, And we are witnesses of all that he did both in the country of the Jews and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree, but God raised him on the third day and made him to appear, not to all people, but to us who had been chosen by God as witnesses who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. When I was young, I used to often wonder why didn't Jesus show himself to the high priest or Pontius Pilate or King Herod or to the Pharisees, for that matter, who always were giving him trouble and wanted him out of the way anyway. Why didn't he just come and show himself to them? And I wondered that until someone said to me, why in the world would God reward them for their unbelief in such a way? Okay, I get it. At any rate, Jesus Christ is risen from the dead. The tomb is empty. It's a verified fact. Amen. And I was going to say end of story. But it's not. There's still Easter Monday, and then there's Tuesday, and Wednesday and Thursday, if you get my drift. Life goes on. And here's the thing, it goes on even after we die. There's always a tomorrow. And for believers, it's always a good thing. Do you ever get on those drill-down things when you get on the Internet? You know, you, you got to press the next button to get to the next thing. Well, they have a headline there. It kind of captures your interest and your attention. So you press next, and then you see another little small paragraph, and then you have to press another next. And sometimes you have to go through all kinds of ads, and it's one next after another and another and another until you finally get to the end. Well, I went on one of those yesterday. It was one that announced that a surprising discovery had been made by scientists when they went to the chapel of the Holy Sepulchre in Israel, in Jerusalem, and dug down into the tomb where Jesus is thought to have been buried. Well, I drilled down, and I drilled down, and down, and down, and the anticipation was just building with each drill down. I was excited to find out what they found there. There were many layers. They got down to the last granite lid and discovered from the plaster around it that it was much older than they had originally thought. And then they finally removed that last lid. You know what they found? Could I have a drum roll, please? Nothing. They found absolutely nothing. You and I could have saved them a lot of time and trouble and just told them that. The tomb is empty. Christ is risen. That's what Mary Magdalene and the other Mary discovered when they went to Jesus' grave on that first Easter morning. It was still dark. Their hearts were heavy with grief. The one they loved most in all the world had been brutally murdered on a cross. Now, I know many of you know that knot you get in your stomach when your whole world is turned upside down. When someone you love dies, When a spouse tells you they're done with you, when the boss says, I'm going to have to let you go, you know that feeling. You're lost and confused and empty. You understand the feelings of those women as they went 
to the tomb. And then the confusion when they found the stone in the front of Jesus' tomb had been rolled away. And there was a dazzling angel on top of one of those stones telling them not to be afraid. He said what you and I would probably say too, he's not here, for he has risen, as he said. This is the foundation of our faith and the basis of our hope. Who could help but get excited about such news? It's exciting to tell the people about the resurrection of Jesus Christ that the tomb was empty. You know, preachers are prone to get a bit animated at times in their preaching. Reverend uh, Eugene McGee is one of those guys. He's an animated pastor who doesn't wear a robe. His sanctuary is very plain and simple, adorned only by a, a, a cross and an American flag. And McGee likes to wave his arms all over the place and uh, <coughs> to emphasize important points in his sermon. Unfortunately, he gets so animated at times that his shirt flies out of his pants and uh, he has, has trouble keeping the shirt tails in the trousers. So to solve this problem, he's kind of developed a bit of a habit of periodically sh uh, stuffing his shirt tails back into his trousers as inconspicuously as possible while he's preaching. Well, on one Easter Sunday morning, getting so excited about this message, uh, proclaiming the resurrection with great excitement, he fished around his back in the usual way and found more material than usual to push out of sight. And he pushed doggedly, however, and on he preached and on he stuffed. At the end of his sermon, he discovered that he had half the American flag stuffed into his pants. I don't get quite so animated but I can tell you that there's nothing that excites me more than the message of the empty tomb. I want to be quick to point out that this message has significance not only for the issues at the end of life, but it has significance for the here and now. The Apostle Paul made, had a sure grip on that truth when he wrote the words of today's epistle lesson. This is what he wrote, If you then have been raised with Christ... Seek the things that are above, where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things that are above, not on things that are on earth, for you have died. I find this such an interesting statement. You know, if you're worried about dying, don't worry about it. You've already died. He's talking about your old self has died, but you have died. And your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. Seeking the things that are above and setting your minds on the things that are above, you find a God not only for what happens to you after death, but who is for you and your life in the here and now. This is especially important for the times we're experiencing experiencing. Uncertainty is commonplace. Life has been disrupted. Fear is rampant. And yes, it's true, we can find guidance, yes, from political leaders, authorities, medical experts, and so on. But friends, there is no substitute for having Almighty God on your side to comfort, to strengthen, to deliver, to heal. And he's a God of resurrection in whose life you share. That means he cares not only about your future in heaven with him, he cares about your here and now. On the southwest coast of Scotland lies a little town, Whithorn. In its ancient cemetery can be found a tombstone with an intriguing epitaph. You think I'm forgot? I'm not. Luck, friends. Your life has significance to many people, but especially to God. You are dearly and deeply loved, and no matter what happens, you are not forgot. You still have purpose, and you always will have value, not only heaven for tomorrow, but in life for today. And God assures us of that through an empty tomb. Now, I may not be stuffing any flags in my pants, and I don't think I'm frothing at the mouth, but I must say, Christ 
is risen. And nothing could thrill me more. Amen.